Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my podcast. Uh, as you can see, we're actually outside uh, here in Russell Square. Um, when we were talking about a good location, I didn't mean like a romantic location. This is uh, super romantic looking, but you know, I was e either here or the office. <laughs> yeah. we, we actually considered doing uh, our podcast slash webcast um, in a museum, and then we couldn't figure out which museum, and then I just didn't feel right. Um, but this is one of my uh, close friends, uh, Chris, and he has actually a tech company as well. And uh, actually, I met him during lockdown. I met you during lockdown, right? Yes, last year, 2020, I think in, in August. August, that's right, right. That's right, right after, like, oh, yeah, you're right, around August. In the middle, like, when, whenever, when things got going a little bit again. Yeah, yeah, we were the only two people going to the office, including the weekends, I tell you. So I have a huge respect for, for Chris as well, just because uh, I think we wear the same shoes and we cover a lot of the same responsibilities and take the same amount of hits of, of running, like, a tech startup, you know? And uh, we don't own brick and mortar businesses. We own businesses that, you know, they're web based. They can affect people all across the globe. And it's really, really expensive to to keep maintaining and running, you know. So I just wanted to share some stories with you, uh, especially, you know, every, every time I'm on LinkedIn, I keep hearing about this uh, mental health days and you got to right. take care and yeah, I'm a believer in it to a certain degree, but like the road that we've gone is not like healthy. You know what I mean? Yes, like, I see what you mean. I think there's a different ways of looking at it. What is mental health? One approach is what is often um, portrayed in on social media or generally in society is to balance things out, to just uh, I don't know, have a have an awesome life and balance the work into that. But you have to, I think, understand what suits you the most. So for some people, maybe that's the way. For other people, the way is to build a business. And if you do that, you, balance is not the way to go. Or uh, maybe not in that sort of balance, how, how, how it is meant. So I think you have to find whatever makes you healthy. For some people, for me, the opposite makes me healthy. Like if I do more, if I, uh, it stresses me more to, to be bored, really. That's just my mindset. <laughs> I mean, I got a bad mindset because I feel like I'll be healthier with more money. So I work harder to make sure that yeah. that uh, rascal of a business will one day exit. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a very uh, important point. Like that is the money side is important in that too. Like what makes you, what, what secures your health in some way. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, you know, obviously I'm 35 right now mm. and people say I look younger. But, um, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's certainly like, till I was like in my 30s, I blew a lot in this company. I mean, I could, the amount of money that I spent in this company, I could have bought a brand new yeah. Benz SL, everything inside, CD player, 8-track, anything I wanted, you know? But the fact is, I just kept reinvesting in this platform. And we just made a push uh, early this morning. And uh, it's a stunning, it's a stunning push, yeah. you know? Um, but it costs money, these tech companies, you know, and uh, I'm just really glad right now that I'm able to keep producing money, to keep funding it sometimes. And uh, but obviously, like you, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not traveling every day. I'm not buying Rolexes. You know, I think, uh, yeah, that money, I guess, has a lot to do with like mental health, I guess, to a certain it, degree. It does. And, and especially when it comes to building a, a SaaS product and an online tool like we're doing, it is. I, I probably have un underestimated it at, at, at the start, and you have to really find a way to to make sure you sure you pay yourself. So I think one way of doing that is certainly to take on other type of work, other service work, whether it's an employment, part time, freelancer, consulting. I'm doing more of um, you know consul consulting work, similar mm -hmm. to what you do. As far as I can take it on, as far as it doesn't take too much time from my real business, the software business, especially in the space of funding it. And I, I, it, it, it's just what it is. You need that to fund yourself and the business for quite a long time. And, and building a product takes a lot of money over years versus the other thing you could do, build a service business. where well, you don't need that, uh, I think. But hmm. uh, this is everything. Funding is everything in that way. Yeah, I, I tell you, I've learned one skill set. I learned it at a younger age, and this is probably why I've upset a lot of people. 
um, but I don't stress. And I think that's why I can work excessively long hours. And the reason I don't stress, I tell myself that I'm, I'm not a surgeon, so and no one's gonna die on my table. So, you know, so be it. If it's gonna be late, it's gonna be late. You know, like, I'll always have money to make sure I can pay the bills and... That's a, I find that very fascinating. I think I'm not at that point yet. I, I stress far too often. I think it's just my mindset or my state of mind. Stress um, does no one any good. It doesn't help you in making any decisions. More importantly, it still is going to have the same outcome no matter whether it's good or bad. And it's often not even real. It's often like I heard, uh, actually, I watched an entrepreneur um, who has already built many successful businesses and his advice was um, the likelihood of your worries to become true is the same as a miracle will happen. Yeah. It often is what it is. And it's exactly. That's perfectly. It is what yeah. it is. You know, uh, I've had late bills and, um, you know, then you see like, hey, uh, this is like the penalty fee. It is what it is. You just got to mm -hmm. suck it up, call them and just say, hey, listen, sorry, um, I'm going to have to pay you the two installments. So be it. Okay. So, all right. So it has also the other side. Yeah. I think uh, maybe have, can some, I can learn something from that uh, to stress less maybe. And, but yeah, but I think generally I would think it's, it's better not to stress. Uh, it's better to just get things done with an urgency, but, but not stress as, that it makes you really uh that it affects you yeah that, that's that's a really really good point you just said right there um talking about a sense of urgency and mm -hmm. i think this is what makes many people different uh, for me and you compared to a lot of people that do want to get into a startup or talk about getting a startup i feel like many people don't really understand sense of urgency mm -hmm. you know uh, for me and you you know we're starting relatively young age we're taking huge risks I mean, if this doesn't work out, we're both fucked. Because you know, like, we're both at an age right now where I can't go consulting at Deloitte for that, you know, 200 grand paycheck. Now I've really committed to this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, I turned off Netflix. You know, I got a second job. At one point, I had to wash dishes just to keep this, you know, alive. But it was a sense of urgency. It wasn't I'll do it when I, you know, quit my job and I have all this money security. I just sense of urgency. I need to do it right now. Don't get me wrong, I've had help. Like uh, Justin's helped me, you know, uh, Sultan's helped me, Victor's helped me, uh, Senor Santalaya's helped me. Mm -hmm. But my point is that I, I just, you know, sense of urgency. We had to build it, build it now. And I think, man, the road that we take is, is, is certainly a risky road, but the rewards are so great if you do it properly yeah. and can exit from it. Yes, um, in terms of risk, one more thing that comes to mind is, yes, it is risky to build a business, but I do think we are on a better side as in doing an, uh, doing an online dig digital business. Yeah, yeah. It's very different to building something, a brick and mortar business, which has its own ups and downs and, and benefits. I could never see myself do that. I would, I would go crazy uh, if I would think of, of running a restaurant. It's like so much stuff to do day by day. Mm. So it's in some way a privilege that we are living in these times to build businesses online. So much easier too than it was even five years ago. You mean um, to build a business online these days is easier now? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like back when I started, it was like really PHP websites and Drupal. And now you've got like full stack developers. They're easy to find. You've got really good mm. tools to like pay subcontractors online. Like it's it's easier now than it was. Yeah, what I feel is it's easier to to start a business these days online, but it's it's harder to grow it because of the entry barriers are so low. Just like literally anyone, anyone here, in this park could do something online maybe they are they are doing that already right um and that is the the tricky part the market is full of people especially let's say offering uh, advertising solution let's say helping other businesses grow with some sort of services i see that as almost a problem now things are over full with stuff yeah, yeah. well let, let me ask you this um obviously because we both love startups and we're both heavily involved in the tech community um, any advice for people that want to build their SaaS product? Because I have, I have a product that's not really a SaaS product. It's just more of a, a it's not a SaaS product. We have many tools and applications, but yours is an actual SaaS mm -hmm. product that, you know, provides lead generation for inbound as yeah. well on people's sites. Any advice for people of how to get started and, and more importantly, um, yeah, personal, sure. not just, you know, like about the business. 
Okay, so <clears throat> probably lots of things that come to my mind. Firstly, I'd say figure out how you're going to fund it for at least a year. If you, if you haven't got that clear picture in your mind, if there's doubts, if there's <clears throat> any, um, any way you would not be committed to that, to that time frame, it's going to be tough because you need to need that time frame and even more. So figure out the funding. We found a solution for our model where uh, my co-founder and me, we both fund the business in different ways. I, I'm more, I do that more on the marketing side, he does it more on the tech side. Um, so there's various ways we've solved that over the years and we keep changing that from time to time. And I think that has been good. So we're clear on what we spent on, on each division, on, on tech and on marketing. So funding comes first. Then I would say only build something if you really feel there's a need. I, I, I would have not done a lot of things um, in hindsight mm. um, because I learned Maybe it's not the best thing to work on, not the best thing to build, to do a service model with. So spend some time to speak to a lot of people, to study the market, study what's out there. Niche down. So if you want to build a software, pick a sector. We're doing that pretty um, aggressively now, I could say, targeting marketing and web agencies versus the whole B2B space. And then you said personal ideas also, as in... Yeah, um, Something profound that you've learned that uh, you'd wish you'd known at a probably younger age. Yeah, okay. I, I think the commitment is important. You cannot do things with half focus. It's a huge thing. And, that's, and uh, I can still improve on that, you know, uh, you know, with having other things going on from time to time. But that's the key. You have to fully commit yourself to it. That speeds things up, that reduces doubt and gives you results quicker. That's the main thing that comes to mind. Um, other than that, just be focused, <laughs> work hard. Those things. Yeah, I mean, uh, advice from my end. I mean, persistence. I yeah. mean, I should have really stopped this like five years ago. I mean, I had no effing clue what I was doing. You said but, stopped it two, five years ago? Yeah, I mean, like I was just so persistent. I'm like, all right, I took the money and now I just got to right. make the wheels turn. Like uh, most people would have just quit. I see. You know, and I was like, I really was persistent about it. And you really need to be persistent because, man, you get kicked in, you know, the guts oh, many, many times. I mean, you know, and, and persistence is, is everything. I mean, it takes the effort to get up and go in the morning and like, okay, well, still a zero revenue, but we just made an update, yeah. you know? So. I would have one question for you on that also. Um, what's something that keeps you going if, if the results are not there for a long time? Because I've done my due diligence and I know there's a need for it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I looked at, I did my homework and I've, I've looked at all the comps as well. And, and, and the most important thing is, is that I've built something that there is definitely a need for. Uh, and now is just the time to acquire mass end users to provide the service. Okay. Like people will always look for jobs. So it's the certainty and the belief you have, right? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's good. That's good to, to hear. And that's why I'm persistent because I know there's a need for it. Like I, I went through a situation of where I needed a tool like this, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, I know a lot of people suffering from this issue that they don't know who they're applying for. So we just de-anonymized it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I did my homework and I know in my gut that I'm better. I mean, I saw one of my Eastern European competitors. Mm -hmm. And they sold for 75 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm, I don't have the traffic they do, but it's only a matter of time. Do you find them? Um, yeah, I see. It's interesting. There's often like these stories we read on, on companies that are already, let's say, at the exit level or where we want to be. Is that something that is more motivating or more discouraging to you? No, totally motivates okay, me good. because then I could calculate how many Rolls Royce yeah. cars I could buy when I sell. <laughs> yeah, that's good because I think you need that mindset because there's... I, I heard that from quite a number of people, even friends of mine, that sometimes can't deal with if someone is ahead of them in some way in business-wise. And it's, it's, it's a problem. You have to detach yourself from that. It's yeah, I, that's, that's a really interesting point because when I, when I was in a startup um, and I, I had like the foundation at ours, like, hey, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. And people get very nervous, like... And everyone always comes along like I have this idea, but you, you can't tell anyone and you have to sign NDAs. But the truth is like 95 percent of the people don't have the skill sets to execute. Hmm. And even if they do have the skills, they don't do it because they're comfortable with their paycheck anyway. And it takes years. 
Exactly. And they're not going to be persistent. So, you know, that's that's another thing is that like uh, when you're in an early stage, everyone is always scared. But there was always going to be competition and competition is great because even for me, like now looking at all my competitors online, I'm now building tools that, you know, that is complementary to my product and differentiates myself from them. So yeah. I hope that was water. It is. Yeah, okay. It was like Whoa. pigeons everywhere. For a moment, I was like, ah. Oh. Why do they only come to us? <laughs> because it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I showered, I swear. Yeah. No, but I mean like, um, you know, I, I, I mean, how do you feel about competitors yourself? I love it. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Without competition, I think that's where the, the fun part is, in my view. I mean, surely it's it's a risk, and I'm I'm not so naive to only think there's no danger because a competitor could buy you out, yep. uh, whatever. If you if you are already a decent size, or they could take over customers. But if since we're competing digitally and globally, immediately, like. What does competition mean? Like, sure, yeah, sure. I like, I mean, we, we are under ma massive pressure to to develop features to stand out, to have a unique uh, proposition. But overall, I think it's more fuel than, than anything else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's for sure. I, uh, I mean, for me, in my case, I, I just look at their exits and I'm just like, all right, well, how do I get five times better than they do in like, you know, landscape? So. Our platform has no borders, uh, you know, yeah. like there are many websites that are very static. So you have to go to like, you know, um, you know, like website forward slash Singapore to see the jobs in Singapore as we build a single page app that aggregates all the local jobs around you. Mm. So uh, hopefully that's uh, useful, you know. Yeah. And how do you feel about exiting your company? Is that on your right? Horizon for Horizon? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. You know, it's, it's a tough one to ask because if a VC sees this, I have to say, yeah, in five years, you know, but I'm, it, I got a little stupid when I created the name of the company. I used my last name, Heinonen and H-E-I and then yeah. turn it into Ryzen. Yeah. But um, I love the business. It really is like my baby. But um, yeah, I mean, if the money is right, absolutely, I would sell it. There's, there's no doubt in my mind, you know. Uh, but what I really want right now is to acquire like a, a significant uh, use case of where everyone feels that, hey, when they're looking for a job, it's got to be done through Horizon because we get a lot more information. They can apply directly yeah. without recruiters. And that's what I want. Also, the story for myself, I, I really just want to see it through. That's that's probably the most important thing, but I want to see it through. See, yes. And uh, I have a similar view. I'm more focused on building the business, building it up than selling it uh, that's the most important thing because yeah. otherwise you can't think of it surely like what we do a lot is think of building systems like everything we do since we're still small but we run the company as a medium-sized business from its structures um not like hierarchies but just basically systems like everyone knows what what needs to be done we have regular schedule schedules of meetings of daily stand-up calls with the whole team and um documentation so if new people join they immediately see it on paper they don't need to be trained manually although we still do that so that's a big part of how we work building the company up but the mindset is already big right now yeah i got, I got really lucky about uh people um i got a really good cto uh based out of bangladesh you know he's, he's amazing uh and then Caitlin joining the team has taken a huge, you know, uh, it's, it's the stuff that I used to do that I weren't, wasn't good at. You know, I can't write. I can't believe I still can't write. I write in bullet points and emojis, but yeah. she can fix my English in the outreach emails. Mm. So she's, yeah, she's been like great, especially she's, you know, that's, that's the thing. Like, uh, especially at mine and your point, like there's a point of where we have to give up things that we're not good at. Yes, and oh, yes. uh, she has an eye for like pricing. So she repriced a lot of the products. You know what I mean? Uh, she created so much more documentation. Actually, she's relabeled the entire system. Hate to say it. Actually, she's done a lot that I may have because I have very, you know, um, very box mindset right yes. now. So it's good yeah. to get help. Someone who completely 
kind of rethemed it already gave me like hey i don't understand this i don't like this we need a category features so yeah i'm actually it's great that the team has grown because mm -hmm. i got a lot of feedback which i can't see because i in my mind it's perfect yeah the, the, the funny thing is also I, I i work in a similar way like um i'm often like i'm very focused on what i do sometimes don't look enough beyond that and then but the great thing is i have great people around me in the team friends other founders like you they give you a lot of ideas on what you should do and then i can quickly do them like there's a funny thing going on with a friend of mine he has a SaaS business he sh we share a lot of stuff of, on what we do and then he shows me this and that and then like i have already implemented the next week because i'm very quick with implementing but some, it needs often this push from the outside yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no no absolutely i um I can't agree with you more there like uh friends i think is probably the best i have one mentor in the tech industry i used to work for him a couple of years ago but he really taught me that i don't know shit, which mm -hmm. was pretty tough to, to to take and he taught me so much about domain authority you know about software discovery platform he taught me all about lead generation yeah. and doing it yourself so yeah friends do help especially in the community you know and uh this is why we realize we're kindred souls in the office doing the same thing but listen man i can't thank you enough for yeah. you know coming over here in the most romantic area possible i think people have got the wrong impression of us but i think uh yeah hey listen thank you so much yeah. man and um yeah we'll definitely i'll come more by your office i'll be there on fridays these days cool yeah. work from there so okay thanks as well it was really cool to chat awesome yeah. buddy okay cheers cheers bye guys bye.